and welcome if you are new to my channel. I am Carrie from Carrie's Culinary Crafts. Uh, here on my channel we talk all things food and preparedness. So today I'm going to emergency candles with things that you probably already have in your house. Um, these emergency candles are candles that will burn for a very long time. Um, longer than your standard paraffin wax or your uh, beeswax candles uh, they're not they're not a great candle for like everyday use because it is very very soft because of the fact we're using shortening we're not actually using wax so it is a very soft candle but it is a great thing to have for emergency. And if you need to make a candle, it's a great thing um, to use what you have on hand to help you out. Um, now I know that these candles, I made a big, uh, I think it was a 16 ounce candle and I did a test on it to see how long that it would burn and it burned for about three and a half days. Um, so I think that's really great because most of the candles that you buy, the ones that you buy from Walmart or even ones like from Bath and Body Works, if you would light them up, up and let them burn till they go out, they are dead. The Walmart ones are dead within 12 hours. Um, some of them will go to 24 hours, but that's about the max um, if you burn them constantly. So I'm going to bring you along with me and show you how to do this quick emergency candle and very, very cheap if you think about it. When you buy candles, I mean, sometimes now they're $15, $20 for like a 16 ounce jar candle. Um, you can get some cheaper ones like $12 or something for the smaller, the 10 ounce um, jars. So what you're going to need for this is you're going to need uh, shortening. I have several things of shortening here, and if you saw my um, my canned good pantry reorganization um, video, you will see that I talked about these um, these shortenings here. I don't use shortenings in cooking at all, uh, so I took them out of my pantry uh, because I knew that I was going to go ahead and make them into candles. Uh, these are old and expired. Um, this is a perfect thing you can do with old expired stuff or you can do it with new stuff because this one, and I'm gonna show you the difference. This expired back in 2015. That tells you how old it is and that tells you how long it's been since I've used any type of um, um, shortening. Okay, the first thing I can tell as soon as I take it off, I can smell that it's rancid. Okay, so that's that's like your first clue. And then when you look at it, it's like all dry and crackly. So you certainly wouldn't want to use this in cooking, but you don't have to throw it away. You can use it for a candle. Okay, I would not leave it into this, obviously, because it's plastic and it will burn if you... Um, go ahead and try and keep it in this but if for example if this was a tin or a thick glass or something an easy way to do it instead of the process I'm going to show you is to go ahead and take a candle about the size that you would need like a taper candle um, you can even buy like this is like I think this is this is like an emergency candle where they're like about eight inches or something like this this tall um, that is what one of these are um, but you can take any type of taper candle at all you could just take it and you could just shove it right down in there like that okay it's not pretty but it's not supposed to be that's that's not what it's for so you could do that if this was a glass or a tin container, but this isn't, so we can't do that. But um, the whole purpose of needing this candle, one of these candles, because it already has a wick, and it, it this is a paraffin wax, or if you use a beeswax, whatever kind of wax it is, it will mix along with your shortening 
and between the two of those is what makes it burn for a long period of time. And then by doing this, you don't have to worry about buying separate wicks or figuring out how you're going to um, get it to, stuck to the bottom or anything like that. By using a candle, it's already done for you. So all you're doing is sticking a candle into your shortening, okay? So I'm gonna show you quick and easy how we're going to do this. So I'm gonna take this back out because I'm gonna need this. So you're gonna need shortening and you're gonna need some glass jars. Um, way back when, when I used to buy salsa, um, I kept all of these jars because they are good emergency preparedness jars. I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But it's a nice thick glass so you won't have to worry if, um, you know, if you have a candle in there and it's lit, you don't have to worry about it, okay? And another nice thing, these have these button lids, you know, which are like, you know, seal tight jars. Another emergency preparedness, if you get my meaning reusable okay so anyway I have this pan here now if you were using regular wax you would not use any pan that you use in your kitchen you need to have something that's specific for wax because once you use it with wax you're never going to be able to use it as a cooking utensil again okay but being that this is shortening I don't care, I'm just melting it down. It is oil, okay? Even though this is rancid, it's not gonna matter. Once I wash this out, it's gonna be fine. But when you have regular wax, you can't just wash it out. It doesn't work very well. So you'll see sometime, if I bring it along when I'm making regular candles, you'll see I have all separate um, tools for making regular candles. You can't use your standard pots and pans and pitchers and stuff like that. You have to have ones that are just designated for making candles. And ask me how I know. Trust me, I found out the hard way. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do, I have this pan heating up and I have three things of uh, shortening here. Now this is the one that is no longer, this This one is like rancid. And see how it's just like flaking apart? It is very old. Um, so I am just gonna get this here into this pan and get it melted down. And the nice thing about, you know, this opposed to, uh, wax is it takes no time at all to melt down but by no means am I saying that this is a better candle than making a regular candle no this is a, an emergency candle this isn't something I would do for everyday candle does not compare to like real candles um, the real candles smell much better they look much better and you know, they're just much prettier, a much nicer thing. But this is something to do in case of emergency. Now here is one that is also open. And this one, it has an ex, it has expired. The date on it is 2019. But this one is actually still good. If you smell it, it has absolutely no smell whatsoever. The other one that I had from 2015, it was stinky. It was rancid. Um, but like I said, I don't cook with this anymore. I only cook with lard, butter, and oils. I don't use shortening for anything. Even like if I make biscuits or, um, you know, pie crust and stuff like that, I use butter or lard. I won't use, I, I just don't use uh, shortening but I do keep this in my long-term pantry for this purpose, 
for making emergency candles because this is super cheap. You can get one of these big things for a couple dollars and make several candles. And you can't make several, or you can't buy several candles for a few dollars. Okay, so this is just your emergency candle. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in here and get this melting as well. grabbed a couple jars I might need to grab some more because this might be more than what I have here but we shall see but this is a definitely a good thing to um, use like glass jars for You know, there was a point in time that I saved all of my glass jars. I don't do that much anymore unless I specifically need them. Um, and you could use mason jars as well. I personally won't use mason jars because I use mason jars for canning. So I just make sure that my jars are always available if I need them for canning. But if you have if you want to keep like a a dozen get a dozen jars just for candle purposes you certainly can do that um but you can also just save old jars jelly jars sauce jars uh you can just save them and use them for your emergency candles Okay, now this is the last one I'm going to go ahead and open up and put this in here. That one doesn't smell like anything, so that is actually okay as well. But I just don't use, use it anymore. So you're just going to let this melt down. It takes no time at all. Um, actually, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna turn the can, um, camera down so you can see like how fast this is melting. You see that? And we're just gonna go ahead and wait till the rest of this melts down. And then we will go ahead and start filling jars. Okay, friends, now this is all about melted. I have a few chunks here, and I just kind of thought of this. With these chunks, I could put those chunks in the bottom of these, and then maybe I could go ahead. That one's, that's too small. But on two of these, I could go ahead and stick my candles. Let's see if I can get you guys closer go ahead and stick my candles into them. And that way it will already be able to hold up this candle, hopefully, when I pour that in. But you'll see if whether it, it works or not. It might not. This might just end up melting it and then they'll fall over anyway. If that's the case, it doesn't matter. But, okay. So this, all of this is melted. Now if you want to, you can go ahead, you know what, maybe I will just to make it a little easier to clean. 
since this is oil, it'll be easier to do it this way. And you want to go ahead and just dump your or your shortening in in your jar. Now that one definitely worked. I'm not sure if this one will since it was so small. Oh, it's staying put. How about that? Okay. All right, now when you are pouring this in, you want to leave a little bit of your candle showing. Like I said, this isn't a pretty candle. This is an emergency candle. Because when you light this, you want some of this wax to melt down into the other, to, into the shortening because that's what makes it a long-term candle, those two mixing together. Uh, your shortening itself doesn't burn very, very well, but this, um, the candle wax will burn really well. So when it mixes with the shortening oil, that's what allows it to cause it to burn and it's a very slow burn. Okay, so these two I have poured in. I'm just going to let those go. Let them go for hours. Let them go overnight. It's not going to take that long for them to dry or they will dry from the top down. And it will take a while to dry. Um, but remember, like I said, this is shortening. So it's still going to be kind of soft, but it's not going to be a liquid. It's going to be a solid. So we're going to go ahead and dump into these others. Let me see if I can dump it. Yep, there we go. And these, obviously, I can't put the candles in yet till it starts to, starts to solidify a little. And once that happens, then I will go ahead and stick my candle in. That way it could, it will be able to stand straight up. And I have a little bit more in there, so I'm going to go ahead and get another jar. Okay. Here's another one I found that I... I kept my dehydrated garlic in it, but this, I can go ahead and use so that I have, no, oh, here's one, let's see, oh, that's a little short, so I'll go ahead and use that one, that'll work. And of course, that doesn't. Uh oh, this one fell over, the one that I thought might. So I need to get that on. Right. Oh, there it is. Now I have five emergency candles here.
Now I'm going to bring you back whenever they start solidifying to show you about putting the candles in them. And also while we are at this point, I'm going to go ahead and grab some essential oils. You don't need to do this. This is just if you want to scent them up a little bit. Um, I have plenty of essential oils, so I am going to go over and grab grab something, not sure what, and we will go ahead and scent up these candles. Okay, I found one of my big jars of um, organic lavender oil. I'm going to go ahead and use this to scent my candles. This has a dropper in it. I am probably, I am just going to do about a half a dropper per candle. So it would be like maybe 10 drops. Maybe about a quarter of a dropper per. That was quite a bit. And you can smell it right away. Okay, so we're gonna let these go till they start solidifying and I'll bring you back. Okay, this is uh, one hour after I heated up all the oil and that one was in there and i just stuck this one in there just to see if it was ready i didn't think it was because i shook these others and they're still kind of like liquidy so this one is kind of solid but i'm going to give it like another hour uh to solidify even more before i put the the rest of these candles inside Okay, we are back and it has been three hours. They might, they're not completely uh, cooled because you can see it, it's solid here and then there's liquid and then there's solid down here. So they're not completely done, but it, it will be done enough that we can go ahead and add in these candles. Okay, so I have three of them here. I've already added the candles into those. So all I'm gonna do is you just wanna pick the right size candle for the jar that you need. You want the candle to be taller than the poured um, shortening in there. Uh, because remember, you need to have the paraffin wax from your candle to mix with your shortening in order for it to be like a long-term candle. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this in there. Let me get that fuzz off of there. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and stick it right down the middle and it should be pretty soft, but you don't want it liquid. If it is liquid, then it won't let the candle stand straight up. So see how the candle is standing straight up there? And that is what you want to do. And there's like about half an inch worth of candle sticking up there, which is great. And then we'll go ahead and stick this one in here. Stick it right in the center and push it down. Okay, that one's like, you can see that it's still a little wet and that's okay. As long as your candle is sticking straight up, that's what you want until it completely cools, then you won't have to worry about it moving anymore. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick this thin one in this smaller jar. And there you have it. Now for this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and light it and let it burn all this wax down to put on top of that wax there. Um, and then I'll be able to put the lid on it 
and then store it away. So I'm not concerned. I mean, if you wanted to, you certainly could cut the the candle, but I'm not concerned about it. Um, th that'll just be more wax that mixes in with uh, your shortening. So I'll go ahead and light that to burn that down. That's gonna do it right now. And once, um, and once all that wax gets burnt down and it's down lower than this, then I'll go ahead and put all my lids on and I will go ahead and store these. Now remember guys, these aren't, uh, these aren't pretty candles. These are emergency candles. What you can do with items in your home. Most people do have this stuff. If you, if you don't have a can of shortening, it might be worth getting and storing for you um, for this purpose. Uh, I have a couple stored down in my long-term pantry and you know, maybe whenever I go down and do that organization down there in, in my long-term storage, maybe I'll bring that up and make some more and then I'll get some fresh to put down there. Um, but this is just a fabulous thing to do um, in order to make some emergency candles that'll burn for a very long time. And it's so easy to do, so I thought I would share it with you guys. And you guys let me know if you go ahead and do this. Um, until next time, friends, this was our uh, DA, <laughs> DIY for the month, which was our long-term emergency candles. Or our long-burning emergency candles. Candles.